This week on Shop Talk, we'll find out about the latest about the fresh fruit shake company, The Big Chill. We also have foam and furniture company, Mandawe Foam. And for those who want to start their own home-based business, our friends from Entrepreneur Magazine will share with you some tips. We'll also check in with Ariel North Media and Pastry Princess. So stay tuned for the next hour. I'm Ria Tanwat Cotrillo. First up, we have with us Tony Chu, the president of Agri Nurture Incorporated, the mother company of Big Chill. Hello, Tony. Thanks for coming on the show. Hi, Ria. Okay, so how long ago was it that you um, acquired Big Chill? We acquired Big Chill uh, late 2011, so it's about two years ago. Okay, and of course, you were very, very familiar with the business because you were actually supplying the fruits for it, right? Yes. Okay, and. Um, Aside from the Big Chill, which is um, really like one of the first uh, very popular shake stands um, in the country, you also have other food um, businesses which are somewhat connected to Big Chill. Tell us about that. Well, basically, we uh, acquired Big Chill and we started the uh, expansion program where we see a lot of potential combining uh, concepts. So lately, we've been um, trying to put um, health and wellness together by offering fresh bar and big chill together to consumers. Um, we also uh, launched the, the first vegetarian quick service restaurant concept called uh, Cafeteria Verde. And uh, we have also brought in the famous uh, Seattle coffee brand, Tali's Coffee, to the Philippines uh, last year. Okay, so um, let's talk first about um, fresh bar. Okay, um, what exactly is the concept behind that and why do you like to tie it together with Big Chill in particular? Well, Big, Ch Big Chill in particular is just uh, uh, serving fresh fruit uh, shakes and uh, uh, it's most of the time when, you know, when, when we go to grab a drink, we also want something to fill our stomach and because Big Chill, Big Chill is a healthy concept so we, we thought of uh, offering something uh, that can bring health to every Filipino consumer. Okay, so that's a good pairing and good partnership between the two. Um, another business that you already mentioned also was um, Tully's, yeah. right? Tully's from Seattle. You um, tell us about the bidding process that you had when you w had when you bidded for the for the global uh, control of, of the company. Well, the. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, bankruptcy court has uh, awarded it to uh, the famous uh, McCreamy. Um, You're talking, of course, of actor Patrick, Patrick Dempsey. Dempsey from yeah. Grey's Anatomy. So yes. it was you versus him. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> it's a Philippines against, uh, against the McCreamy. Seattle doctor. But uh, uh, the war is not yet over. Uh, however, it, uh, it was an exciting experience. And uh, uh, we see a lot of potential in building the uh, coffee brand in Asia Pacific. Okay. Um, of course, you know, when it comes to coffee, there are other more established brands yeah. or certainly brands that Pinoy's are more familiar with. How do you plan to get Tully's in there to get a significant part of the market share? Well, we want to position Tully's as the coffee of choice rather than uh, competing against the mass uh, market with uh, volume. We prefer to be the, the one with the quality where people will go to the place because they like the, the coffee. Okay, and does that mean that um, it's a little more expensive? Not necessarily. Uh, not everything uh, good should be uh, uh, more expensive than, than the, the others. Okay, so we will be seeing more of Tully's around the Philippines. How many stores do you have open at the moment? Right now, there are seven operating stores and uh, we are going to expand rapidly through uh, franchise uh, uh, packages that will be offered um, soon. Okay, but looking at the big picture, um, you've always been an advocate for farming and agriculture yeah. um, in the country. Um, what, what, what else in the country needs to be done um, in order for agriculture to, to really grow since, you know, it's one of the sectors that the government mentioned as a priority? Well, Philippines is uh, basically an agri-nation. So we, we're, we're a country that has almost a uh, hundred million population. We're in 33% uh, 
depends full time on agriculture. So solving the problem of poverty, the best uh, industry to attack will be agriculture. Um, you'll understand that in, uh, when you go to the countryside, you actually see old farmers because the average age of uh, Filipino farmers is uh, already 57. So our farmers are getting old. Yes, and uh, if you go to the schools, you'll see that uh, there's not much people enrolling in the agricultural courses. So we are a, a, uh, a country that uh, basically sh should be exporting food, we're, but uh, in fact, we're, we're, we're the net uh, importer of food. So to address the situation, I think as private uh, citizen, the only thing we can do is to keep promoting uh, agriculture as, uh, as a place for um, the, the place, the investment to be. And uh, agriculture actually has a lot of potential that's actually proven from, from uh, the success of uh, agri-nurture. From where we started uh, 15 years ago uh, to where we are right now, it's, uh, it's a clear answer to your question where how do we solve the, the, the problem. It's by investing in agriculture and uh, this is not only about generating profit, it's about the social responsibility of helping farmers uh, improving their lives. Right, the deaf and you know 100 million people is, is quite a lot to feed. Yes. Right? Yes. And actually uh, if you solve the problem of this 33% uh, population, the, the rural economy uh, would, be able, would be able to affect the overall uh, picture of the Philippine economy. Otherwise, the GDP is growing, but uh, the poorest of the poor cannot feel the impact. So you have, we have to always think about how do we really uh, come up with ways to help farmers generate more income. So ra from, from uh, agriculture, we can come up with uh, a lot of interesting ideas. How to improve the yield, how to, uh, how to generate new innovative concepts such as combining tourism to agriculture, uh, offering agri-tourism as a uh, nangal, or uh, uh, coming up with more incentives to, to bring more people to, uh, to make their idle land productive. Right, okay, so you, you mentioned a, a big word there, which is agri-tourism. What does agri-tourism look like? When you say that, what types of projects um, are you looking at? Well, basically, we have a, we have a short chat with uh, the officials of the Department of Agrarian Reform. And uh, one thing that was uh, mentioned was um, farmers are normally hand-to-mouth. So when you, when you fund them, uh, they, they plant now, they will only be able to generate cash flow during harvest. So what, how, how, are, how, are, how are they going to survive during these four months of uh, waiting? The best uh, idea is to cluster uh, farming community into one and then generate uh, uh, economic activity on a daily basis by attracting tourists to visit. So the tourists will go there and pick their own tomato, go there and pick their own uh, pineapple and enjoy the scenery. So at the same time, uh, buying the produce directly from the farmer the uh, the impact on the entire uh, province will be uh, very significant, such as uh, uh, the hotel business, such as the restaurant business, um, transportation business. So a, a lot of uh, site industry will will actually uh, be affected directly if we can combine agriculture with tourism. Okay. Having said that, are you able to identify which areas or which provinces in the country would be ideal for a setup like this? Actually, back in my mind, I have the, the so-called four Bs. Uh, Benguet, because of uh, Baguio. Uh, uh, Bohol, because of the, uh, the scenery and also the proximity to Cebu. Uh, Batangas, because of the proximity to Tagaytay and uh, the South Luzon Expressway and also the, the uh, climate and the Batangas port. And Bukit Non because of the pineapple and banana plantation and proximity to both Dabao and Cagayan de Oro. So if we can uh, promote this kind of area where there's scale in terms of the, in terms of the land and uh, the existing big plantations, actually it's, it's going to bring a lot, a lot of uh, uh, impact and value to the farmers.
Okay, so to have a ag agri tourism uh, project like you mentioned, you actually need big parcels of land. Yes. But uh, usually in the provinces, if the farmers do own their land, they're very small uh, parcels. So, um, you know, what what can we do to make these projects a, a reality? There's a lot of ways to do that. Uh, we have a lot of limitations because of the agrarian reform uh, law, but uh, we can cluster them uh, through the user fraud. Uh, law wherein uh, you don't have to own the land, but you can have the right to use it. You can uh, lease, go on a long term lease. You can uh, cluster them together just like how agrarian reform communities are clustered after the land distribution. You can also enter with uh, uh, enter joint venture agreement with cooperatives. So there's so many uh, ways to, uh, to come up with uh, uh, the vast track of land. Okay, and this is something we can uh, expect soon from Agri Nurture? Well, we are looking at uh, this seriously because uh, we have always, we're a young company. Uh, all of us in our company, we're, we're always thinking about innovation. So, for example, on, on our plantation, rather than just generating a, a profit from the harvest, we're, we're seriously looking at possibility of uh, tying up with uh, partners to, to develop this uh, industry. Uh, at the same time, I think this is also the the uh, clamor of our uh, president lately on invest, investment exactly. in agriculture, tourism, and infrastructure. All right. Thank you very much, Tony, for talking with us. We look forward to having you um, on the show again when you actually do have a project like this completely realized. Thank you, Ria. Okay. Coming up, we have foam and furniture company Mandawe Foam. So stay tuned. We'll be right back.